hidden secrets or some tips that you can learn uh, for renovation on your bedroom, living room and bathroom. So just a little bit uh, background of uh, our team here at Leaf Space. So um, I lead the IKEA team uh, where we, have, we are in partnership with IKEA. And what makes us unique is that we actually uh, are able to incorporate IKEA furnishings as part of your whole renovation budget. And it's almost, pro it's almost like providing an end-to-end -end, uh, renovation service to you. So on top of the usual um, typical renovation uh, that involves like demolition, hacking, flooring, tiling, and all of that. We can, we at the end of all this, um, what we call wet works, we are able to incorporate um, uh, IKEA storage solutions to you as an alternative or as an additional uh, value add to you. Um, in addition to like the usual customized carpentry works. So our designers are well-versed in um, IKEA product offerings. So we can do like a pros and cons comparison with you, depending on what your budget allows and whether the space allows and to see which option is better for you. So that's the, uh, the good side that uh, the unique thing about our team here. Okay, so, so today uh, I'm going to share with you how you can better plan and manage your bedroom, living room and bathroom renovations. So we will start off with uh, the cozy room of the house, the bedroom. So everyone knows the bedroom is almost like a place where you want to relax at the end of the day. And, and especially when you step into the bedroom, you want to feel like it is a place where you can truly be yourself and relax and different from the whole day of stress. And and I think the first thing that will let you feel that you're in a different room can be the wall and the floor that you feel uh, on your barefoot. And a common, common flooring options for bedrooms are of course tiles, homogeneous tiles. And um, a popular choice uh, that I personally prefer would be like uh, either a hardwood or vinyl or laminate. That is because um, um, anything that is less hard like towels just kind of give you a little bit of a sense of a relaxation you just kind of feel like it is different from the living room and it is just a uh, just a good tip um, or, or my personal preference to have the living room flooring different from the rest of the house so that you feel differently when you walk into this room and then of course wall wall coverings you can have um, wallpaper and typically paint, the most common uh, type of uh, wall coverings. And I will touch on the different types of these suitable materials in the shortly. So for flooring, hardwood is a popular choice and it's because it's made up of real wood. So it gives like a very warm, natural beauty to the room and you feel like it is very sturdy. It gives actually it improves the, the value of the house as well because it's still it's natural material. And it is uh, relatively durable and long lasting depending on how you take care of it. Uh, the good thing is that with natural hardwood, uh, if there's anything, you could always uh, re-sand it down and re-varnish and like lighten or darken it to a different shade of, uh, depending on the wood stain that you use, okay? And, um, but the cons would be like, you know, it's, it's natural uh, material. So it is not very waterproof. So you can't have water uh, sitting there for a long time. And that's why anywhere, usually this kind of wood, when it's subject uh, near the windows or near a high traffic area where people walk a lot, you will kind, you kind of see the wood is kind of like slightly worn down compared to uh, any other uh, kind of material. Then we have a very common uh, flooring option, which is vinyl flooring. And vinyl flooring is very easy to maintain. It's very cost effective. It's currently one of the more um, uh, popular choice other than homogeneous tiles in the renovation. It is very easy to install. So it can just be, it can be done, a huge area can be done in like one to two days because it goes by a click, uh, like a, a click and lock kind of system. So you do not need like heavy, um, chemicals to go and glue things together or prep the floor. So it's just very easy. And even to remove it is also very easy. And, but the cons will be that um, the, in the early days when vinyl first started to come into the market, um, people are worried about they might have hazardous chemicals that can, can linger along uh, on the, in the air for many weeks. But nowadays you can actually specially request for, specially request for uh, vinyl floorings that doesn't um, emit this kind of hazardous uh, chemicals. 
So, so you can you you do have options now. Then uh, lastly, for flooring, we have laminate. Laminate is actually almost like in between of hardwood. It's not natural, but some semi somehow natural because in, in the middle it's like high density fiberboard and it is not like vinyl flooring. So yeah, it's just like in between. And you can have many design options to choose from because the colors can literally be depending on the type of look and feel you want. It is uh, considered uh, still cost effective. Um, but the cons will be, it is laminate in the end. It's a surface. Um, the surface can be easily scratched. And when it's scratched, you can't really repair it like hardwood where you can just sand and varnish it. And uh, it is not like scratch resistance like vinyl flooring. Vinyl flooring is very hard. Um, uh, the surface is not uh, so scratch resistant. So the cons would be, it could, once it's scratched and you can't repair it, it might have a kind of like a, you know, it might cheapen the look. So that is the main concern. So for wall, um, a good option for bedrooms could be wallpaper because wallpaper typically comes with different textures. It gives a softer look and feel to the room. So if, especially if you choose those that looks like fabric looking, so you, 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 you can feel that um, it gives you a luxurious feel, a little bit like uh, look like you're in a hotel because most, if you notice it, hotel wall coverings are mostly uh, using wallpaper with like maybe fabric looking textures. Um, that also helps to uh, absorb the bounce, the echoes as well, because when you have a plain hard wall, voices or sound kind of bounce off the wall. So you will hear a lot of echo um, in the room. So for bedrooms, normally, uh, a good way to use would be like a bit soft, just to soften the look would be uh, some wallpaper. And it is considered quite durable depending on uh, how you're using the room. And of course, humidity in Singapore is a main concern. But I would say nowadays, uh, we are quite advanced in terms of wallpaper offerings in the market. So they are quite resistant to humidity, I would say. Um, the cons would be like, you can't move it anywhere once you're there and then to get it to be removed, you will need professional to remove it and then retouch up and repair the wall before new before before doing a, a new paint job or a new wallpaper. Okay. But the good thing is that it's so customizable. You can have any designs. You have so many designs to choose from. So you can really make a big difference to the style of your, of your room with wallpaper. Then, of course, the common one would be painting. Painting, you can have a wide variety of colors. It is easy. It is most straightforward. And any now and then you don't want this paint anymore, you can always change the whole look and feel of the room with just a new fresh coat of paint. And one common mistake is that um, if you go with the plain white walls in the room, it could just look like just one dimensional without any um, depth. And why not just play around with uh, certain walls with different colors, play around with colors a little bit and uh, experiment with darker colors because ultimately it's your bedroom. You don't need it to be bright like your study room or living room. You can go a bit more, um, take some risks, go darker colors just to make the room feel like cozier because ultimately you want the bedroom to be a place where you can relax and then slowly uh, drift off to sleep in a more comfortable way, okay? Um, however, the cons, of course, that uh, the finish is very basic. It's just plain one, uh, one plain wall. Uh, but nowadays, you do you can use paint to achieve textured walls, which comes with different patterns. Okay, and then the paint job you need to touch up every couple of years because things can get chipped, and also um, water damages could affect that. What else can you do when it comes to um, having um, storage in your in your in your bedroom? So if your space allows, we if like you know after you um, after your interior designer and yourself plan the layout of the house and there is more space at the foot of your bed, uh, more than what you need as a normal walkway, you could always use such a design whereby you create like a headboard with with storage for your for your at the back of your of your bed so then this creates actually an additional storage space you could hide things away and you don't have to worry about clutter everywhere and it also creates a big a main feature when you walk into the house and other things is that when you build in a customized carpentry work like that 
uh, with storage. You could add in accent, uh, you could add in like ambient lighting, such as the cove lights. So the room can have multi layers of um, multiple layers of light rather than a one single source of light. I've given this uh, this tip before in the previous webinars where I said that okay, how to make this room a room look uh, cozy and look like it's, okay, uh, it's uh, like some some design thinking behind it is not to have a single source of light or white light at the middle of the room. You should have different layers such as maybe a table lamp, some cove lighting as such, and then maybe a standing lamp somewhere. So as, as long as there's different layers of light, you the whole room can have different feel. And uh, this one, this we call accent light, then you can uh, ambience light, then you can have something that called task light where it's just, just purely for reading. And then the main light in the room is just general lighting. Okay. But this is a good way to add extra storage to your room. Another way, uh, this is especially useful for uh, condominiums or any houses that has bay windows. And when you want to create extra storage and still make use of the bay window, you could uh, create something like an elevated platform as such. And you can use the bottom of the platform for storage of bulky items. This also this let you make use all the way to the window and also allows um, more space for like in, such as this incorporating a study table at this at this uh, angle so so you can have multiple function in the room okay and yeah this is a uh, one options when we you know especially for new condominiums where space is uh, really really limited uh, it is a very popular option for people to uh, to come uh, to to want to put in a platform bed then of course, floor to ceiling wardrobe. So when you do something such as a floor to ceiling wardrobe, you're almost uh, extending the wall inwards. So you don't feel like this is a, it's, it's just kind of blend into the rest of the house. And um, one, one thing to uh, make any house or any room looks neat and tidy is to make sure that there's no clutter. You don't want, you, when you walk into a room, the, the last thing you want is multiple colors or packagings from like products, maybe snacks, maybe your books, a lot of colors, all trying to fight for your attention. So that's why um, the best way to make a place feel calm and, and neat and clutter-free is to limit the number of colors you have in a space. So you can start with maybe storage boxes, all in plain minimal colors, and store all your things away from plain, plain view. And other option would be just have storage cabinets everywhere and put everything within the storage cabinet so the whole room just look like everything is hidden so that is just one way to make the place feel more spacious is to have less clutter and less things fighting for your attention when you walk into a room just go with few colors and stick to it okay so i'm done with the bedroom and now i'm gonna move on to the living room so we all spend the most of our time in the living room. So I would say that is living room and the kitchen is almost like the heart of the, of the house where uh, every family member will get together at the end of the day before each of you go back to your room. So, so we will say living room and the kitchen are like high traffic areas. So when you say high traffic areas, you want it to, you, you want something that could last long and uh, could withstand different people and different activities at the same time. And uh, but nowadays, I think that uh, it is very common for people to still use, uh, to use like vinyl or wood flooring for the whole bedroom to all the way, a uh, living room all the way to the bedroom. Uh, but it's also very popular for people to choose um, luxurious materials such as marble to create this feel when you walk into the house, you step on the cold marble floor, it feels very, uh, the, the feeling is just different. Or you can go with uh, towels, it is most common and uh, most uh, cost-effective way as well and a unique way if you want to create like an industrial rustic kind of look you can always go with like a raw cement screen but it's not for everyone okay and wall you have the usual wallpaper paint brick looking textured wall wood paneling we will show you a few examples uh, as we go on so marble flooring of course any place any interior space with marble floor it just creates a very elegant and elevated look and it, it definitely 
gives um, creates higher value for your property. And it is it is somehow a natural stone. So it is very unique to your house and your place. And marble, one thing is that you can you can do marble polishing if at some at a certain point, if certain parts of your marble is like um, rough and not as good as before, you can always choose to do marble polishing at a later stage and then so that it becomes bright and shiny again. Uh, but the cons is of course, marble comes uh, more expensive than any other uh, materials. And it is still considered a decent, quite a delicate product because it is, um, Quite, it is semi-porous. So when you, you when when water or especially coffee or red wine, anything with high staining um, elements could easily stain a part of the marble. And and since it's since it's porous, the the items will the liquid will go into the marble and you will not be able to remove it. So this one you just have to be careful. We always say that marble requires tender loving care. Then you have the rough one, which is cement screed. So cement screed naturally comes uh, uneven because that's the beauty of it. When it's like uneven, a bit rustic, so it creates like a very raw, very industrial look. And um, so, so that's why people like it when they create a certain, uh, when they want to achieve this new trend in uh, like the design theme. Uh, but you might think that because it's you know, this kind of material, it is easy to maintain. I would say cement grit is not as easy to maintain as you think that it might be. It stains easily as well, and it also accumulates dirt and dust. And uh, do understand that cement grit, it is uh, the material, is the material itself over time, hairline cracks can come come out, and then you just have to, you know, arrange for people to come and maintain it and patch it. And those are the ones that you see maybe at, like, uh, car parks when you see like people patch some of the lines and those are because it comes uh, over time there's hairline cracks and when you patch it with another color it's very obvious of those lines so choose cement screen um, uh, consult your designer and see which material that you are you're able to accept in the long run then of course the most versatile option for your room will be homogeneous tiles it is a uh, it comes with a wide variety of colors. You can choose any kind of uh, uh, any kind of colors you want, and it is non-porous. It is easy to maintain and very good for high traffic areas. And if you have pets or young kids, and you know that there will be spills where you wouldn't be able to wipe it off right away, I think towels will be the the easy way to uh, the easy solution for you. And over time, even with with sunlight shining on it, there's no discoloration and um, just basically easy to maintain with a wide range of designs. So uh, I can understand why this is one of the easier options, uh, the, the most common option here in Singapore. Uh, the cons will be like because it's tiles, when we, how we, the, the method of how we are applying and uh, laying the tiles will come with grout lines. And grout lines, as you know, is usually uh, the color of the grout lines are usually um, matching with the tile colors, but over time it could turn yellowish, it could turn green depending on how you use it, and it could turn black and dark. So, time and again, you might need to you know carefully maintain the grout grout lines and then re do regrouting works. Okay, wall wall covering. You can the it's it has been um. A popular choice as well for people in Singapore to create this like New York loft, loft looking uh, kind of uh, look with this uh, brick wall. So, so this is actually like a textured wall. It is uh, considered low maintenance and relatively high durability. And because the wall is rough in a way, so sound can could bounce off, but not as 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 um, as hard as a plain flat wall so it helps with the sound as well um, however the thing is that because it is rough in surface so you know dust could stick easily so you, when you need to you know clean it it might be a little bit more uh, of an effort then we have wall paneling um, wall paneling or feature wall the, uh, from this picture that you see we uh, we have one part of it that is like a feature wall using laminate uh, wall, wall paneling uh, what we call wall panels, not wall paneling, wall, wall panels. And then the wood 
is like the fluted panels. So you could always mix and match and not always all is good. So if imagine the whole wall is all uh, fluted panels, it could be a little bit too much for you. So there are, uh, nowadays we can do designs such as we uh, break it down and create interests, create different textures such as this. And it is a great tactic to hide certain flaws or cracks or unevenness within your wall. So, so you, you are redirecting your uh, attention towards the feature of the fluted panel rather than the floor itself. Um, it is easy to fix when it comes to wall paneling. And, but the thing is that it's still wood, so it's not waterproof. And generally, fluted wall panels are quite expensive than any other options. Of course, uh, it's more expensive than a painted wall, for example. Then for, for, to talk about space planning in the living room, when you walk into a room, um, a lot of times you want to create a place where your eye could immediately, uh, immediately draw attention to your eye when you walk into the room. And um, people could, you could, uh, you could do with a, a full on feature wall along the side of your TV where it creates extra storage space and you can hide things away. So it creates, um, it allows you to, um, keep things away from, you know, uh, make the place clutter free, like I've mentioned earlier, and also uh, create an accent to the room, such as in this case, this feature wall is um, very visually pleasing to the eye because it, it's kind of like along the wall. So it doesn't jut out, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's kind of like along the wall. And we mix and match with some open spaces, in, like a good balance between some closed and some open to create a little bit of airiness. If you have a full thing fully covered and very boxy, it could feel very heavy. So that's why we have, uh, in this case, we have, uh, you know, at the, on the right side, we have the shoe cabinet, we have some open, uh, open niche in between and play around with like uh, LED lights to create, you know, um, different layers of lighting. And you see the top of the feature wall, we also added cove lighting uh, LED along the top. So at certain points when you just need, when you're watching a movie and you want the lights to be dimmed, you do not need the main light at the fan area. You could just on the side uh, and create a certain ambience for the, for the room. And you see, this is the same thing. It is a, it is a feature wall with storage uh, with storage cabinet, but you can, you can tell it just the, it's the same, same method, same function, but such a different look and feel to it just by the, the choice of uh, the design for the doors. And the, in this case, using handles and also uh, using different kind of colors. So just now what we have achieved from the previous photo, I just recap, is um, giving you a very modern and contemporary look and feel very sleek without any door handles, like we are using finger grooves, um, for, for door opening. So creating a very minimal and modern contemporary look and feel. Whereas this, it gives you a very, um, could be country, could be classic, could be, you know, a little bit um, different kind of uh, look and feel, but it is the same uh, customized carpentry for your feature wall. Yeah, so you got, it's a mix of um, open spaces together with storage that creates this depth and um, allows like um, visual, uh, visual interest as the moment you walk into the house, you know that this is the main uh, place to be. That's why it's called feature walls. And another way that you could do about this is to incorporate like certain functions that you need, such as in this case, you could just have a, a, a wine cellar, a dry pantry for your coffee machine, and you have this glass, mirror sliding door that you could slide around to hide different different times when depending on what the, uh, the need is. So, so something like this. So all these are uh, customized, fully, fully customized to the design, to the color, to the functions, to the size of each drawer that you need, require. That's why it's called customized carpentry work. Then the direct opposite of customized carpentry works is loose furnishings, which is just basically loose furniture that you can get. And I, I must say, um, IKEA does offer a wide selection of loose furniture, but because they're so modular and so many ways of uh, putting them together, it is almost as good as customized carpentry works. And that's why when we are at, with us at Leaf Space, when we provide the quotation for you on like customized carpentry works, and if um, 
certain certain parts of the house uh, we can rank them by importance and by your priority so we we focus on the uh, your top priority first and once the budget is maxed out we could sub substitute or uh, uh, provide alternative solutions to to replace certain customized carpentry with a suitable and very very close uh, loose furniture from ikea to to make it up like this such as see this room is actually made out with all loose furnitures from ikea so built-in versus loose furnishings is of course built-in is fully customizable the cost is definitely higher because it's really like you're getting a carpenter in the factory to use solid plywood really like labor work uh, bring into your uh, to your house and then really do the installation and fa uh, fixing uh, loose furniture you can buy it off you buy it off the shelf and then subsequently when you move to the next house you can actually bring it away with you so and because of that the the the, the weight of the items are also uh, taken into consideration. Anything we built in, you know that it's heavy. It's like made of solid plywood. Whereas loose furniture, we use different kinds of uh, uh, materials so that the cost is low and easily transportable and easily fabricated. Uh, uh, can be fixed by a layman, uh, you and me, or we can even get professionals to you know come and fix it up. And you can the flexibility is there. You can bring it to your next home sell it you but you can't sell a built-in customized uh carpentry okay so i'm gonna touch on five living room space planning tips that you can achieve using ikea furniture example is such as this um hidden storage sofa you can keep pillows beddings any bulky items within inside and you know nobody can know what you need so this is like a good a good item that you could you know consider thinking that singapore you know uh, houses are of limited size so this could be this kind of like multifunctional uh, product is always good to have this is a sofa bed for example with storage then make use of movable storage uh, um, items such as a trolley like this. So you can move it around whenever you have guests, you could hide it somewhere. And then when you need it, you take it out. If when you donate, you can put it away. So easy, like a good, a good item to have in the house. Then never underlook uh, or never underestimate uh, a wall mounted cabinet. So such as this, uh, the, the, the Besto system in Ikea is fantastic. So you can wall mount it to the wall, lift it off the ground so that it gives an, a feeling of airiness. You feel light rather than have it not, not rather than the usual and having it standing on the floor. But a lot of times, don't forget the vertical space because for for a lot of the IKEA uh, storage cabinets or the Besta series or any other series, you can mount it top on the wall, so you don't you don't uh, lose. Um, valuable, valuable real estate at the top of the wall. So you can have multiple um, design and multiple storage spaces within the house. Then of course, something like this, a coffee table that has, that doubles up as a uh, storage under the table. It's always good. So you keep things clean. And even though you put things under the table, you could always put them in storage boxes uh, of the same color. So it, oh, it like I said, you, you minimize the number of colors in a room. Then an ottoman and a footstool that uh, doubles up as uh, extra seating whenever you need or put it with your sofa as a, so you can use it as like a chase lounge. It's uh, a great idea. And so just want to remind you, um, we, we have a design clinic for you. So. I'm sure you have a lot of questions and you may you might be you know just getting your keys or getting your keys soon and have a lot of uh, questions about where to start or how to start don't keep it to yourself just just scan you can always uh, scan a QR code speak to um, anyone from uh, myself to my team we are all friendly people ask us and tell us what you have in mind and then we are happy to provide um, it's, it's a free consultation we just provide like oh this is this is what you could do maybe it's too far from your uh, key collection date and you should maybe we can talk again at this time or maybe now the timing is good and we can you know so just just talk to someone so that we can always uh, guide you along the way and happy to help 
And finally, we are uh, reaching the bathroom. Okay, so bathroom, I would say it's pretty straightforward because of the high humidity, high moisture uh, nature of the bathroom. The floor, we need things that could withstand like really waterproof and ceramic tiles, marble, granite are just common options. Uh, homogeneous tiles are a great options. They are very, they are definitely waterproof. And anyway, before we lay any tiles, we definitely will apply like proper waterproofing. Uh, it is very durable and there is a lot and almost unlimited design options for homogeneous tiles currently in the market. It's just like a lot of options and you can, you can almost make the room look and feel anywhere you, you want just by choosing the right color scheme and the right patterns for your tiles. But again, it is labor intensive because you need uh, like professional tiler to really uh, lay it for you. Um, then, you know, marble. Marble is always a good option and good choice when it comes to uh, giving this sense of luxury, um, uh, timeless and very richness to your bathroom design. Uh, but however, for it's, it's not as common uh, in our normal homes, HDB or a condo because of the high usage. However, it's very common in like uh, luxury hotels because it is it just creates this feeling of uh, uh, that, that is, you can't compare to a normal um, towel. Okay, so but always remember, it is some marble are always um, are somewhat porous, so you have to be careful on what you're gonna you know put on it with with water and with any form of liquid, and it can get really slippery uh, when when the floor is wet. Uh, for for towels, you could. You can actually choose the kind of roughness that you want. The the, the high um, those with the more of a rough surface actually provides um, uh, friction, so it doesn't get so slippery when the floor is wet. So it creates a form of safety as well. Space planning, um, if the space allow, it is always good to segregate like a dry and a wet area, so it protects the surface of your you know your toiletries and also the vanity cabinet where you can use storage so water doesn't go splashing directly on it so that is uh, if if the space allows and i think one very uh, often overlooked uh, good idea is always mirror cabinets mirror cabinets allows you to free up the counter space and also reduce the messiness the colors that it's going to be around and make the whole bathroom look like very sleek and minimal um, you, you need a place where you can keep all your toiletries away from the naked eye and mirror cabinets are the way to go. Uh, and of course, in, in, a, in a wet uh, area like the bathroom, suspended vanity cabinets for storage is always uh, the recommended one. So we do have two, I mean, there's multiple options in the market. You could choose to, of course, use customized carpentry work where we actually fully customize the size to the, uh, to the space of your bathroom. Or if your bathroom is more, is relatively um, straightforward with the space, you can always use uh, whatever that's available in IKEA. Those suspended vanity cabinets works well as well. And if you prefer to not have it suspended to a wall, you can have those with legs. Those legs are waterproof and can withstand water. So there's many options. Just when you speak to a designer, the designer will be able to assess your floor plan and then suggest what is right for your, your house. And this is a good way to, uh, we, we call it like a shower niche, like a little bit of a niche that cuts in into the wall uh, to, to create some storage for your you know, toiletries. And we could, easily, we could do this when you have like, you know, in HDBs, we always have like the bathroom pipes and depending on how the space we could work around, if we are able to do like a box up of the pipe just to cover it and a certain area, if there's some space, we could create like a niche like that to, you know, um, so you don't have to have a protruding uh, wire rack, for example, to put your toiletries, it could hide in like this and it looks, uh, gives a more luxurious and uh, elegant look to it. And now finally in the spotlight. So I'll just share with you some of the latest trends maybe in the current market, but maybe not so new, it has been around, but 
just good trends that I think are still, still stealing the spotlight. Um, one of them is the power track sockets. It's very useful. So instead of having electrician creating multiple PowerPoints that could be very, it could be like a eyesore when you see like, oh, two double socket, double socket, you know, uh, at, and creating space on the wall. You could use something like a power track sockets where, you know, we, ha we do have many electrical appliances or, uh, your phone, iPads, computer, laptop, you know, many different things that requires power supply, then you can um, add, add more or remove more by using something such as a power track socket. And while nowadays it will even come with just like your USB uh, point, you don't even need to have the three pin plug. Another one uh, com uh, now getting more and more popular uh, is the smart lighting. Uh, Smart, smart lighting. Um, other than smart lights, um, you could also have like motorized blinds that you could plan um, which hour, which day, you know, at what time to come down naturally, like, like automatically. And IKEA does has a good um, range of uh, smart lighting, which is the IKEA thread free uh, range. And, and a design trend that I noticed nowadays is that, you know, how in HDBs we do, we always have this. Um, uh, like cove, a little bit of a cove that go in. So we could use like plaster seal, get uh, the, the plaster seal material, plaster board and create something such as a design archer. So we, we don't, we don't uh, fully waste the space by boxing it up and building a flat wall. We could play around with different uh, arches, different shapes, different designs. So you can still use them for displays and still use some of the space and not have like the, the cove that is so typical of like how a uh, HDB always will have because there's the beam and all that. So consult your interior designer on how we can better make use of spaces and things like that. So these are just like tips that you could use of what is existing in the house and how to then creative ways to counter it. And finally, say hello. <laughs> um, I want to just give you a little bit of a background of who we are. So Live Space, we are Asia's fastest growing renovation platform. And we are backed by reputable investors such as Caris Capital, Goldman Sachs, Inca Group, and many more. And since we launched in March, 2019, we currently are the biggest in Singapore. We have over 200 plus designers and have completed over a thousand homes. And we are also um, ha have a few awards such as the Design Excellence Award, Canvas Super Trust Award for 2021 and 2022. And we partner with major brands and uh, big names in the, in, in the industry, uh, such as IKEA for the, our renovation and uh, design platform. And also uh, partner with major banks to provide like 0% interest-free loans to uh, our homeowners and many more. And so this partnership between IKEA and Leaf Space is to provide this one-stop solution to you whereby we incorporate um, renovation when, which you need and adding on the furnishing at the last bit of the journey. So this partnership kind of just like, you know, we're trying to provide like end-to-end -end solution to you. And with that, you could also uh, have better clarity on how much you're, you're going to spend in the end, because we could spend more here, less in there, or play around with it. So you get better clarity from the get-go. So that's uh, our, our, our aim to start with. And um, Few, few ways to talk to us either just now I will, I will, I will flash the QR code again uh, after this uh, where you can then just 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 drop us a, a note so we will get uh, one of my designers to contact you or you can drop by to any of our four locations within the showroom in Ikea Alexandra of course the flagship store Ikea Tempanese and the new one Ikea Gem store and uh, the one of its kind a planning studio in Ikea uh, in Jurong Point. And with that, I am done with my webinar. I hope you guys had a good time. And over to you, Lucille. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, Ava, for that super insightful session. I personally found it super useful. I 
don't know that much about renovation. So this was really interesting to me, especially finding out about the different kinds of like built-in versus loose furnishing. When I walk into a house, I've never really like noticed these things. I just thought like, oh, wow, this living room looks so nice. So that was really part of our job. <laughs> we, yeah, it's an so occupational cool. hazard. Every time we walk to a space, we like look at everything around. <laughs> So uh, um, earlier during the, the webinar, my colleague Nigel asked how many people here are getting their home keys within the next year or well, within this year. We didn't get that many responses, but I am really curious. So guys, how many of you are getting your keys within this year or looking to renovate within the next six months? Type I in the chat so we, so we know. Oh, okay, I see some raised hands. Okay, cool. There are quite a few people who are getting keys. Um, I, I think a lot, there would probably be quite a few of you whose keys got, got delayed. So I expect that a lot, quite a few of you would be getting keys now. Okay, cool. So before we go into our Q&A, because we have gotten quite a few questions, please feel free to keep asking us questions and we'll try to answer as many of them as possible. But before we go into that section, um, we do, we would love to hear your feedback about, you know, the webinar, about what kind of topics you'd like to hear in future and some like, what are some burning questions that you have? So scan this QR code or my colleague Nigel will pop this link again in the chat so you can click on it and complete the feedback form. And you will also stand a chance to win a $100 IKEA gift card by completing this form. And, you know, genuinely, we really are curious on what you guys would like to hear next so that we can try to make this session as useful and as informative for you as possible. So, yeah, we'll just linger here for another 10 seconds. Um, so you can scan the QR code to give us your feedback and stand a chance to win $100. I see the chat is going off. Okay. So <gasps> Nigel is saying that his BTO got delayed by another three months. Unfortunate. <laughs> okay, cool. So I think we can move on to the next slide. Um, the link is in the, in the chat as well, guys, so you can continue to give us your feedback. So we have gotten quite a few questions. So while we're gonna get Ava to answer some of these questions, but just if we go to the next slide really quickly. Oops, um, yeah, just another reminder that I, I see that a lot of you are, you know, getting your keys. So you would be looking to renovate quite soon. Um, so if you have any burning questions or if you'd like a one-on-one, -on -one, like more in-depth session or design tips, renovation tips, or you just want to talk to an ID, please feel free to scan this QR code. We set up this IKEA design clinic especially for you guys. So you can have a chat with our lovely Ava here, who is an interior design expert, as she's demonstrated in the past like 30 minutes. So feel free to scan this QR code or use the link for the design clinic that Nigel has just popped in the chat and book a completely free interior design consultation with Ava and her team today. Okay, so Ava, we are now going into questions because we have quite a lot of questions. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. Um, first question, for the bedroom, is there any recommendation for soundproof materials? Um, yes, anything that is soft for like the more soft surfaces that you have is always good for sound. For, for sound. Um, the more hard walls or hard materials you have, sounds bounce off hard materials, you, you know, and when the more they bounce off and they reflect off this wall, you just, you, it gets um, uh, quite annoying. So um, one option would be when you, when you do up, um, when you do like a headboard uh, with the storage, uh, with, with, with hidden storage, you could ask the carpenter to work out some areas that is uh, using fabric or upholstery material. So that creates softness to the house and any exposed wall, um, instead of using paint, you could use 
textured wallpaper that are slightly soft and had the textures that looks like fabric. So that actually just softened the whole feel of the room and it helps a lot with the sound. So growing up, I was always told that, um, you know, the eight cartons, you can paste that to, yes. is that true? Is that actually true? You see, do you see the, the, the similarity between that and like a, like what I wanted about upholstery and right. wall texture. It's all the soft material. And right. that the eight cartons, yes, like if, if you want to do a DIY and you don't care <laughs> about the look, you could uh, play around and experiment with multiple eight cartons on your wall and that could be your feature wall. Who knows, right? <laughs> yes, for sure. Okay, cool. Moving on to the next question. So this one is about cost. So how much roughly can I expect to spend on my bathroom renovation? Well, it depends on how big of uh, renovation are you talking about? Like, um, are you talking about demolishing the whole bathroom and then buying brand new um, uh, sanitary wear and then come up with towels? And are you using towels? Are you using marble? And what kind of um, uh, the, the, the sanitary wear, what brands are you using? So I would say just budget around like between five to 8k to 10k for each bathroom because it also do depends on the type of tiles you're using if you're using like very uh, the, the tiles that has multiple patterns and it comes like the, uh, then the cost is higher then of course you're uh, you're spending more on the tiles but the labor is more or less the same so yeah you could budget around like 5 to 8k for each bathroom roughly mm. okay and on the same topic of cost um for a five room flat, is it possible to keep renovation costs between 30 to 35K? Yeah, well, I mean, you can. It's just that during this discussion with your interior design, uh, interior designer, we need to, we, we provide like our, our quotations are itemized. So you will be able to see, okay, what you want to do, it adds up and you want to keep it within 30 to 35K, sure. Which one is more important to you and which one is a, uh, it's, nice to have but not important and you you don't mind using alternative materials or alternative solutions to it or you wait till like phase two or phase three at the later stage so we can keep to your budget because it's itemized in our quotation so we are very transparent in that um what you want to do versus your scope as long as reasonable you want to keep to 30 to 35 we just see what you can do up to that budget okay cool next question how can I remove acid stains from ceramic tiles? Yeah, you can, um, you can get someone to do like chemical cleaning for your house. Uh, ask, look for the right materials that could do certain clean, certain way to clean it. But it depends on what stains is that. So uh, I think that you would, it's better to get a professional come and uh, check what stain is that and whether whether this chemical is suitable. The worst thing you want to do is that you use a material, a, a chemical that instead of cleaning it away, it actually it. It, it eats away the surface layer and then it creates like a rough patch and then you, you can't do anything to it and you have to maybe hack off that towel and replace the towel. So yeah, okay. <laughs> ask the expert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, you know, like how on Google, they're always like, oh, you can mix like vinegar with like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Maybe don't do that, guys. <laughs> I'm, I've never tried it. I don't know how it will work. But if you want to, if you are the, you know, the organic, the natural DIY, try it at a small corner that you can see. <laughs> oh, and you good can, tip. True. You can, yeah, you can, that you can later on put back whatever that was there to cover it. And nobody would, nobody needs to know your experiment, right? Until it's good. proven good and right. Good tip. Okay, next question. So for the separator between the dry and wet area in the bathroom, what kind of material is most ideal? It's definitely glass panel and tempered glass. We use tempered glass um, because glass, glass is a common uh, material that you use for uh, shower screens. And if, you, if the space doesn't allow you to have like a sliding or a swing door, you can just have a plain uh, glass panel, just like uh, just now the example that we have shown, and for added um, uh, to to add like it's actually more of a design, but some people feel like it's safer with an aluminum frame. You can add like a the the silver or the black powder coated aluminum frame. It provides a certain uh, a sense of design as well to add to the look and feel. Uh, so you don't necessarily need a door. You can just have just a fixed panel. 
Personally, I really like the matte, matte tempered glass with the black. Ah, in terms of glass, glass I know you can also choose different type of style. There's frosted. Uh, the plain one is the basic one. You can choose um, those that comes with like uh waves. You know, yeah. But I would say it's it's definitely uh it should it needs to be tempered glass to be safe. So what is tempered glass then? Is it like well, you know, I use that for my phone cover, the screen protector. Is it like stronger or? Yeah, tempered glass. Tempered glass is like the glass uh, went through a round of like a chemical uh, treatment to it. And when if if there's any breakage, any risk of breaking, it actually shatters to small pieces rather than breaking in big slabs. You know, a big piece of glass, a sliding glass door for your kitchen or a, a glass panel for your window, if they are not tempered and something hit them and they crack. Imagine they get broken up and they are big slabs of glass. It's very dangerous. It could, it could cut us. It could, you it's know, the, the, the idea, the, the thought of it is just so scary because it, when it's a big piece of glass, the harm that you could get to a human being is just unbelievable. Um, so when it's treated uh, to be tempered glass, when anything of such, when it needs to break, it shatters like sugar, you know, like it just comes on small right. pieces. So the, the, the worst you can get is maybe chips here and there, small cuts, small scratches, rather than, you know, really dangerous cutting off a hand, you know. Okay. So always go for tempered glass. For safety, always. for sure. Okay. Okay. Next question. So we are running a bit short on time. So we'll probably answer the last two or three questions. So, does LiveSpace do customized DIY ETL work? Mm, so, as, I guess like our official partners to IKEA, we we provide uh, generally. I mean, we provide solutions to IKEA products, but any IKEA hacks that you see. You know, there's a lot of IKEA hacks that the, uh, a lot of great creative people are uh, doing everywhere. I think that DIY, we will have to leave it to you. We, we don't uh, really do with the, uh, the hacks. We, we quite um, res like respectful to how IKEA product it is, and then we deliver that. Uh, we can come up with multiple ways to mix and match them, but if you need to like, you know, change the color, remove this and that. I think that it's um, it's more fun if you do it yourself. Isn't it? That's the whole point of it. Okay, cool. Okay, so maybe our last question for today. Is there a minimum renovation budget required in order for Live Space to take on, let's say, a three-room BTO? Well, we we ultimately we want to look at your your scope. So we don't have a minimum budget. So, uh, but we do charge a flat uh, twelve percent, and we do have a minimum twelve percent uh, fee on that, which we can further discuss that with you uh, when 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 we um, when we have like a first consultation. Because um, a lot of times you think that you want to spend very minimal, but the things that you need for a BTO, in installation of lights, painting a first coat, doing up a kitchen and buying furniture, you think that you're going to spend little, but it's, it still sometimes comes up to like at least a 5 to 8K or 10K. So, so I think uh, we, don't, we don't have a minimum budget, but ultimately we want to see what you actually want to do. If a lot of things that you want to do, you can easily do it yourself. You also wouldn't feel it's worthwhile for you to pay someone a design and project management fee of 12% if you can just easily do it yourself. So it depends on that. Oh, thanks for that transparency. Okay, so I think that's the end of our Q&A, but there were quite a few questions that we weren't able to get to during this session today. Again, please feel free to book a one-on-one -on -one time with Ava and her team, and they will definitely be able to give you much more in-depth answers to all the questions that you might have. So finally, to the part that everyone has been waiting for, we have two lucky winners today um, that will walk away with $100 ETA gift card. So our first winner, drum roll. I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm doing a drum roll. <laughs> um, Nicholas Wong, mobile number ending in 6869. If you are here, can you please just say a hi in the group chat or like a me? 
Oh, Hello. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Congratulations on being our first winner for tonight to walk away with a hundred dollar Ikea gift card. And our second lucky winner, Jaredine Tan, mobile number ending in four two five two. Again, if you're here, please say hi, me. We will give one minute, thirty seconds. For Geraldine Tan, if Geraldine does not say hi in the next minute, we will pick another winner. Uh oh! Oh no! Okay, Geraldine, last call. Um, Geraldine Tan. Oh, okay. yes, she's here. she's here. Oh, I was like, oh no, yeah, $100 gift card. I bet everyone else on the chat was like, please don't say yes. Okay, great. So, Nicholas and Jaredin, congratulations. You're the lucky winners of $100 Ikea gift card. Um, someone from the list based team will be reaching out to you within the next 40 hours, 48 hours. And to everyone else, thank you so much for joining us tonight for this webinar. If you have any feedback, feel free to. Let us know, let us know what you'd like to hear in the next webinar. And that is it for tonight. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much. I hope you guys no have play with you. ideas and tips on what you plan to do. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye everyone.